Okay, in this video we are going to play around with GeoGebra and take a look at um, curvature and osculating circles in the plane. Um, so I'm going to start off with GeoGebra Classic because there's kind of a lot of stuff that we want to do. Um, Alright, so we got all this. And I guess the first thing to do is, uh, I don't really need to see this grid, so I'm right clicking and unselecting the grid. And then I need a function that I'm gonna work with. So I'm just gonna name it f of x. And let's say we use, I don't know, uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's use cosine of two x to start with. And then we'll be able to change it because we're gonna do everything in terms of f. All right, so I need um, a couple of things. So one thing, I'd probably like to see uh, the unit tangent vector because uh, I'm gonna talk about curvature. So let's see, uh, unit tangent vector. So I'm gonna define a curve, so curve, and I'm gonna call it uh, t comma f of, well, I'm gonna type t comma f of t. So I'm just parameterizing uh, the function that I have. And then I'm gonna let t go, I guess zero to two pi seems like enough. Uh, well, I can see all this, so let's go, I don't know, negative seven to seven, I guess. Uh, negative seven to seven. You watch GeoGebra like try to guess what you're doing while you type things in. And then I don't really need to see this, so I'm gonna hide that. And then I'm gonna right click on this. I don't really need to see the label. So I have this. The reason I wanted this uh, parametrically is uh, that I want to be able to use this to find the unit tangent vector. So uh, the unit tangent vector, I'm going to graph in a very specific way. So I'm going to uh, type vector and so you see there are two options. One, you can just make a point. The other option is um, we can have a starting point and an ending point. So I'm gonna do this in one shot. So my starting point, I'm gonna make A of V. Uh, right now there is no V, so uh, you get this warning. And what's gonna happen is as soon as I press enter when I've typed it in correctly, it's going to create a, GeoGebra will create a slider for us. So A of V comma, uh, now the vector I want to, uh, end at, so I'm starting at A of V, and then I know that the vector I want is the unit tangent vector, but I need, it's going to go from A of V, so I want the displacement really, like where it ends uh, and where it begins. So A of V is where it begins, plus I need a unit vector. So I'm typing unit vector of A prime of V. So you might have to think about that for a little while and maybe like play around with a bunch uh, and see how it works. I'm gonna press enter, creates a slider, and creates our vector, and let's, so my curve goes negative seven to seven, so I'm gonna click here and change my slider so it also goes negative seven to seven. Press enter, and I'm gonna animate the slider, and you can watch our unit tangent vector just kinda go around. So this is an issue. Um, sliders by default go backwards and forwards. For a unit tangent vector, when you're taking a look at what happens, you pretty much just want it to go forward. So I'm Clicking on the three dots, choosing settings, I'm gonna to go to slider. Um, and then here where it says repeat, instead of oscillating, I want it to only increase. And I don't want it to increase once, I want it to keep going because it kind of just looks neat. So let's do this. So I'll have it go. It's probably going too fast, so I might slow it down. Um, but there's my unit tangent vector. So curvature is sort of trying to capture uh, the rate of change of that thing turning as uh, we go along. So, now what I want to do is create uh, the osculating circle. So to do that, I really need a point, but uh, I'm gonna put a point on this curve. I want it to be the point where the unit tangent vector is uh, being constructed. So that's really A of V. So I'm actually just gonna type A of V here and press enter and I have a point. Um, GeoGebra has osculating circles built in. So I'm gonna type OSC and it pops up osculating circle, you need a point and an object. So my point is gonna be A, and my object is going to be, I can kind of choose either uh, F or A, both of the, uh, or curve A, uh, both of those are gonna work. So uh, osculating circle, and then I want the point A, and then uh, I don't have a lot of luck using these templates, so I usually just delete things out and then type them, and then, uh, a is the object, so press enter, and you can see we have a circle. 
but it's starting, it's putting labels on a lot of things. So I'm gonna hide the label here. So I'm just right clicking. I don't know, hide the label here. Uh, so that I don't have to look at those. All right, let's animate this. All right, uh, it's going really fast. So let's slow it down to something that's probably too slow. Okay, so here, not really turning, huge circle. Turning very fast, circle getting smaller. I don't know the definition of very fast, whatever. Uh, not really turning, huge circle. Turning faster, small circle. So uh, one of the things you see is when uh, the curvature is very large, the osculating circle is very small. And when the curvature is very small, like basically zero, the osculating circle is huge. When the curvature is actually zero, uh, the curve is actually linear. Uh, so there's actually no change. Um, so we get this and okay. So, I mean, that's kind of what we wanted to look at, right? You can see the oscillating circle. I think what would be interesting though, is if we could look at the curvature at the same time. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to slide this over, although it doesn't really matter, um, right now and click up here. So you might not see this. If you don't see it, click this thing and it'll pop up, click the three dots here and choose to see graphics two. So now I can see two different sets of axes, which is kind of interesting. Um, and I'm gonna zoom out. So I went negative seven to seven. I could just change this so that I only go negative, like negative four to four or something like that. Um, but let's just like play around and see what happens. I'm gonna close this cause it's kind of in the way. So I can still animate this. Everything's happening. This is graphics one. Um, on graphics two, I want to define my curvature. So this is a little tricky. Uh, if you want something to pop up on graphics two, make sure you click graphics two before you go to the algebra view. There's a way to fix it if you mess that up, um, which I'll, I'll probably mess it up and show you. And if not, I'll show you anyway. Uh, all right. So curvature, uh, what formula should I use? Well, it's two dimensional and I have Y equals F of X. So I'm going to use that formula. So here I want to click here. I want to get uh, curvature. So, uh, I'm not going to name it anything. I'm just going to let uh, GeoGebra do it. So it's fraction, it's the absolute value of F double prime of X over, make I scroll this up a little bit. Okay, over uh, the quantity one plus F prime. And you can see it's going crazy. Uh, it's showing it in graphics one and two, but if I did it right, when I'm finished, it'll only show in graphics two of X. I need to square that. So this is the formula if you have Y equals F of X. It's useful to know all different representations, um, but you might have to look them up sometimes. And I'm gonna press enter. And I think that the one on the left will disappear. Will they both disappear? Nope, and then it's back. Okay, um, so this is a graph of the curvature. So now what I wanna do is, uh, what do I wanna do? I think I'm gonna put a point on here and have it, have the same X coordinate as this point. But remember the X coordinate of this point is actually just whatever V is. So I'm gonna, on this screen, right? So I'm clicking here to make sure that the thing goes there. Well, actually, let me just do it wrong. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna put a point at V comma the curvature. So GeoGebra named it G of X. So G comma, no, V comma G of V, I'm messing up. You can see it's on both of them. When I press enter, I think it's only gonna be on the first one. And it is, but that's not where I want it, right? I want it on graphics too. So what I'll do is click the dots, go to settings. I'm gonna click advanced and scroll down. And you can see it's telling you where it'll show up. So right now I can see it in algebra, which is good. If I was looking at 3D graphics, I would see it there. Uh, that's weird. Um, I don't want it to show up in graphics. So you can see as soon as I click that, it disappears. I do want it to show up here. As soon as I click that, it appears. And then I'm done with this, so I'm gonna click X. And then I kind of don't need to see this. Okay, so let's see what's happening now. Well, now my slider is just way too long. So let's change the slider so that it can go negative four to four. Seems good. Okay, um, animate. Okay, so on the right-hand side, you're seeing curvature. Curvature is getting really small. Circle is getting huge. Curvature is gonna start getting bigger. So circle is gonna start getting smaller. So what's really nice about this the radius of the osculating circle is the reciprocal of the curvature. So when the curvature is zero, there is no osculating circle um, because the reciprocal of that is infinity or you get a circle with an infinite radius, which is basically a line. 
Um, and you can see when the curvature is large, so if you like watch, right, when the curvature gets larger, that's when the unit tangent vector is kind of spinning its fastest. Um, although it doesn't spin very fast for this at all. But the way we set it up, we can change the function, which is kind of nice. So maybe we want to change it to, I don't really have like a lot of good examples in mind here. I'm gonna make a, uh, like a cubic, but I'm gonna scale it way down if I can. I'm gonna go x plus one, uh, x minus one, and then x, right? So a nice cubic. Might take a second for everything. No, it takes no time for everything to update. Uh, so maybe one tenth was a little extreme. Let's make it uh, one half. Let's not even make it that. Let's make it. Let's just let it be this. Let's just make it that. Okay. Maybe I should make it more extreme. Let's make it three. Let's see what happens. Oh, our curvature got really big um, because. When you're at that kind of minimum point there, and now we're going really slowly. When you're at that, here, when we get to the maximum, uh, eventually, and around and around and around. Okay, we're gonna come up to this maximum, having a lot of trouble with like how we should time this. All right, we're, we're showing up, we're showing up. Right now it's hardly changing at all, right? Because it's like basically linear. It's gonna spin really fast. The curvature's gonna get huge here. Oscillating circle gets really small. Uh, it's going to happen again. We're going linear, and now a uh, really small circle, really big curvature, and just going to keep repeating. Uh, all right. I mean, this is what I wanted to show you, that you can do this. Uh, you can play around, change the function. Everything should update dynamically. I think it's a good idea when you change a function uh, to pause all of your uh, sliders. I think that's a good idea. You don't really have to do it. So maybe we make this, uh, what, like sine of x, cosine of x squared, something weird. Looks like this. Oh, not bad. Um, and maybe make it go faster so we kind of like see things. So big circle means that you have a very small curvature. A small circle means you have a very large curvature. Um, graphically, you can now look at a curve and you can decide uh, Maybe not what the curvature will be, but you can decide if the curvature is big or small. If you're not really sure, try to like envision the circle. And if the circle is large, that means the curvature must be small. If the circle is small, the curvature must be large. And that's really what I wanted to do in this video. Um, it's a couple of neat GeoGebra things, so I hope you found some of this helpful. Uh, maybe just the visual is helpful. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful, and good luck.